Hey everyone, Tony here. I'm back with a new video and this time I'm going to show what I think is a better repair for your N64 joystick controller. So if you're like me and have your original N64 controllers, you may run into the problem of the joystick being completely worn out. This controller I bought at a local thrift store and as you can see the joystick is completely trash. It has no movement at whatsoever left or right and very very little up and down. And there's two reasons this happens. One, the bottom of the joystick rides in a bowl, and over time it literally grinds the surface of that bowl away. And that's what causes all this play up and down. The second thing that happens is the joystick rides in a set of gears, and just like the bowl, over time it slowly starts to grind away at the surface of those gears. And that's what creates all of this play left and right and up and down and as those pieces wear out this is what you get. So there's been several guides on the internet on how to repair this joystick. A lot of them revolve using like scotch tape to re to fix the play on on the joysticks with the gears and then epoxy to fix the bowl and I think I found a better solution. Actually I didn't find a better solution somebody made a better solution and that is new replacement parts. So there's a company online called Kitchbent, and they sell new replacement parts for the joystick. This is a brand new bowl that they sell, and then here are new gear sets. And this, I think, is going to be a much more permanent repair for this joystick, at least for the next several years. So this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the disassembly of the N64 controller and the assembly, the installation of these pieces. And then we'll see how it feels after we're done. Disassembly of the N64 controller is very simple. All you need is one Phillips screwdriver. This is a Phillips size one. On the back, there are nine screws. There's two in each wing. There's one here. There's two there. And then there's two way down here in the expansion port. So be sure you don't forget those two, those two screws. Once you have the back of the controller off, the next step you need to do is remove the Z-trigger from its home. It's just held in with these two clips. So just carefully pull the clip back and the Z-trigger will pop out and you can push it aside. We now need to remove the, the ca ribbon cable. I don't know if it's technically a ribbon cable that the joystick connects to the main body PCB with. So that's removed from there. And then just three screws hold the joystick assembly to the controller. The last screw is right here and it's actually holding this body together. And so when you remove it, be careful because there's a spring that's going to push all of this apart. And so with the spring with the screw removed, again this is going to spring apart, and then the, there's two clips right here on the back of the joystick assembly. Just carefully pull those apart. And now we are inside the joystick. So again, there's the bowl that I talked about that the bottom of the joystick slowly grinds away from, and then here are the two gears that, that wear out over time. So the rest of the disassembly process is very simple. I'm going to remove the PCB, and then I'm going to remove the bolt. There's nothing holding it in, it's just kind of sitting in, in the bottom of the assembly. And set that aside, and then the gear, this gear just pops out. And so this one's not as bad. If I pull it up here to the camera, there we go. If I pull it up here to the camera, you can see it's a little worn out over here along the bottom. But overall, it's kind of in it's in almost decent shape. There's a little bit of wear along the top too. Compare that to, especially if you compare it to the new piece. If I get in there close, you can kind of see that they're pretty much identical other than the wear. So again, here's our new bolt. It's really hard to see in camera, but it is practically the same. 
as the old bowl. There's a few there's a few little mold points that are are a tiny bit different, but honestly, you would never be able to tell. I don't think you could ever tell the difference between this replacement part and the original. We do need to remove these optical wheels over to the new bowl. Uh, these are what allows the controller to figure out how far you pushed the joystick. It's literally the same technology that's in old mice, computer mice with with balls in them. Uh, before they were optical mice, they literally have the same technology. If you want to learn more on how that works, I really recommend watching the video by the 8-bit guy. Uh, it goes into good detail about how um, optical mice and, and, and old ball mice work. We put the wheels on the new bowl. I'm just going to drop it back into the bottom of the controllers of the joystick assembly so I don't lose it or damage the wheels because they are very delicate. If you're not careful, you can break them because there's just because of how thin they're made. So you do want to be careful with that. And I'll go ahead and drop the PCB in here because I tend to forget it and then have to disassemble everything again. So again, here's our new gear. I'm going to drop that in place. Oh, I do remember one thing you'll need to do is these gears have a little bit of hard edges on them from where they were molded. So be sure to take a knife or, or a razor blade and then just go over the edge. That'll help things ride a little bit smoother compared to just putting them in with nothing. Especially focus on these these areas right here these round spots there and there that rides on that rides right here on the bowl there's a little there's a little uh semicircle cut out and if you don't clean up these pieces these areas of the gears they will be a little hard to to move and that will make your your controller joystick feel chunky so I'm just taking my knife and I'm just kind of running it over over these edges just to clean them up. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, on them. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on them. Just let the knife's edge do the work. Okay, so let's move to the to the top half of the, of the assembly. Um, same, pro it's a really simple process. You'll notice that the gear is on the flat side of the joystick. So if you, all I have to do is push down the spring and then I can just rotate the gear and it comes right off the controller joystick. And if you look at this one, it is much more worn out than the other put these together and I'll bring them up close to the camera there you can see how much wider that hole is than it's supposed to be and this is what's causing all the play left and right and why we can't move I think it's left and right um, and why there's why there's literally no no range of motion in this joystick so again I'm just going to take my knife Go over the over the edges, clean them up, make sure they're smooth, and I'll just reverse the process. I'm gonna I'll push down on the spring. I will pop the joystick, the gear over the bottom of the joystick, and then just rotate it back up to the top. Make sure I get the joystick lined up correctly. And that's it. The final step is we just reverse the, the disassembly process. Be sure when you put this back together that the bottom of the joystick gets slotted into the gear here. Because if you don't, then you'll have absolutely no up and down movement whatsoever. So I'm just going to carefully line that all up. Squeeze it back together. Clips clipped and then take our screw
Now check that out. This joystick is as good as new. It has full range of motion and it's like I said, it's like it just came out of the box. And so what I'll just want to I'm just going to put this all back together real quick and we'll talk about how you can where you can buy these pieces again and why you'd want to choose them over say a replacement. And there we go. It's all back together and working just as it was when it came out of the factory. Now, why would I want to repair this joystick compared to just buying a replacement off Amazon or eBay? Well, one, this repair is cheaper. This bowl from Kitchbent is only a dollar fifteen, one dollar and fifteen cents. These gear sets, they're not a, a pair of gears is ninety five cents. For, so for just over $2, I can repair this joystick and make it good as new. And if you want a replacement joystick to go with that, it's a dollar, it's $1.05. Now if you compare that to the replacement joysticks on Amazon and eBay, those go for anywhere from $10 to $15. So I could repair four Nintendo 64 controllers for the price of one replacement joystick. So think about that. Now, will these replacement pieces last as long as the originals? I honestly can't tell you. I just got them in and got them in and installed them. But I don't use my Nintendo 64 controllers as much as I used to. So I could see these pieces lasting, you know, at least 10, 15 years. You know, when I, you know, I pull the controller out, play a game for an hour or two, and then put it away. I'm definitely not playing Mario Party with it. So that's going to help with the wear of this controller. Well guys, that's all I've got for today. Again, I just wanted to show what I think is a better repair for the joystick of an N64 controller. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want, and until next time, have fun!